Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and lately I've been getting a lot of questions about LED lighting. I just recently converted my entire house uh, to LED. Um, LEDs have actually been around for a long time in electronics and all sorts of gadgets and things, but uh, nowadays you can get them as just regular replacement light bulbs. Uh, of course, we already have energy uh, saving light bulb technologies uh, such as CFL. Um, but lots of people still have the old-fashioned incandescent light bulbs. So, for example, right here, this is a 60-watt light bulb. Now, keep in mind that uh, 60 watts is not a unit of brightness. We used to kind of think of it that way because we knew a 100-watt light bulb was brighter than a 60-watt light bulb. But it's, uh, it's a unit of electrical power. So right now, this is using 60 watts. Now, if you want to know how much light is coming off of it, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 800 lumens. So when you look for these newer style light bulbs, uh, it's going to have a lower wattage, but it might say something like equivalent of a 60 watt light bulb. Uh, over here we have an LED bulb, uh, which is rated for 900 lumens. And if we uh, take a look at these two lights side by side, uh, visually this one uh, really is brighter, but it's only pulling uh, about 8 watts of electricity. And in fact, um, I can check that. I've got a kilowatt meter. And right here, uh, I can take a look and see that that's pulling 8 watts. And actually, I kind of wonder about the 60 watt light bulb. That is pulling, in fact, 58 watts. So, you know, uh, sometimes what it says on a box versus uh, what the actual light bulb uses might be a little bit different. So always fun to check it with a kilowatt. But just keep that in mind. Watts is how much energy you're using. So it's how much electricity you're going to pay for. So if you've got two light bulbs and one uses 8 watts and one uses 60, you're going to pay a lot more on your, uh, your electric bill with that old-fashioned incandescent bulb. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is this bulb is actually getting pretty hot. If I just use my... Uh, non-touch infrared thermometer here, I'm getting a little over 200 degrees. I'm actually getting 209 degrees right here. It's at different temperatures. It's, it's cooler on the base, but uh, this is up to 200 degrees on it. That's a great way to get yourself burned, whereas the LED light bulb, I'm getting in the 80s, which is basically a nice summer day. But if you're getting 200 degrees over here and 85 degrees over here, think about what that does to your electric bill if you're trying to keep your house cool in the summer when it's already hot out, you're running your central air conditioning, and you got a bunch of these running, uh, it's going to put your electric bill through the roof with the uh, air conditioning. Now, another thing that people don't always understand about lights is something called color temperature. If you look on the back of a box of light bulbs, you might see a little chart that looks something like this. It's going to say degrees Kelvin, and it's going to have some numbers on there, maybe 3,000, maybe 5,000, or 5,600. And it'll have red on one side and blue on the other. That's the overall tint of light that's coming out of your bulbs. Uh, the old-fashioned incandescent bulbs uh, produce around 3,000 or so Kelvin, which means it's, it's orangish, more or less. Now, with the incandescent bulbs and the LED bulbs, you have a choice of more than one color. You can go with that traditional warm orange color, but you could also go with more of a bluish or a daylight type color. Uh, that's going to be the, the 5600 Kelvin. Now, in my house, I've got a lot of windows, I've got skylights, so I actually uh, prefer this color temperature. This is a 5000K bulb right here that I happen to like a lot. But you could get 2900 Kelvin LED bulbs. So what's nice about the LED is that you have the option, whereas with the incandescent, you're just stuck with that one color temperature. Now, LEDs do tend to be more directional, but generally that's a good thing. For example, if you look at this LED bulb, um, the light comes out mostly this direction. Um, it's a little bit more omnidirectional with a traditional incandescent bulb or with a CFL bulb. But typically, if your lights are up at the ceiling, you don't want the light going all directions. You want the light going down to where you're going to be using it. Uh, so the lights, for example, that I have in my ceiling fan in my living room or in my bathroom, they are semi-directional. So these bulbs work out really, really well. Um, there are some other LED bulbs. For example, here is a Cree bulb. And the light on this comes out more sort of around the equator. It's just a little bit different way of doing it but it's almost more of a ring of light going this direction. And it actually has 
almost like a little dark spot at the end. So if you have um, a, a light similar to what I have in my bathroom or in my living room, a bulb like this works really well, but uh, maybe a traditional lamp with a lampshade, uh, one that sends the light more this direction, like this Cree bulb does, might actually work out a little bit better for you. Now, another advantage that LEDs have over compact fluorescent bulbs is that CFLs don't do good when they're cold. They always take uh, a little bit of time to warm up, but if you're like me, you live somewhere where in winter we have a cold environment, I've got a non-heated detached garage. Well, in the winter, it's really super cold out there. So for example, here is a cold CFL bulb. When I turn it on, there's hardly any brightness at all. Whereas with the LED, I have, have full brightness. I mean, right here, look at that difference in brightness. Now, people also ask, aren't LED bulbs expensive? Well, yes, they're gonna cost more than an incandescent bulb, but frankly, they're also better bulbs. And as it is right now at the very beginning of the year 2015, you can get a LED bulb for about $6. Uh, actually, I just got the mail and I saw in there, uh, here's a special at my local Ace Hardware store. Uh, it's $5.99 for uh, feet electric, uh, multi-purpose dimmable LED bulbs. And actually, that happens to be this one right here. So you can just run out right now, buy this for six bucks from your regular hardware store. And the amount of energy that that saves compared to an incandescent bulb uh, comes out to about five bucks per year. So that bulb is gonna pay for itself in basically just over a year. But more importantly, every year after that, it's still saving you that same five bucks per year. And these things are good for up to 20 years. So you can actually save several hundred dollars by using the LED bulbs. And the other question I get asked about a lot is dimming LEDs. Yes, there's a lot of dimmable LEDs out there. You do have to check the box because there's both dimmable and non-dimmable. So right here I have both uh, the Cree and the Feet Electric dimmable bulbs right next to an old fashioned 60 watt incandescent. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, darken the camera. I'm gonna flip it to the manual iris control so that you can see the bulbs uh, straight on. So let me do that. Okay, so first we'll take a look at the, uh, the incandescent bulb. I've got a dimmer rigged up here, and let's bring it up. Uh, so here we are at full brightness, and then I'm going to dim it down to the lowest setting. It's a wide range. You can go from full bright to hardly on at all. Uh, now I'm going to do the Cree LED bulb. This is the lowest setting, and it's brighter than the incandescent was dimmed in this position. I'll bring it up. And again, here we are at full bright, and anywhere in the middle. It does flicker a little bit as you're dimming, uh, but once you stop touching the dimmer, it's, uh, it stays nice and steady. But it doesn't get quite as dim as the incandescent. Now let's take a look at the Feet Electric. So again, there we have it dimmed all the way down. Kind of the same thing, it flickers a little bit when, um, when you actually go through the dimming, but there is full bright. So basically the same thing, the LED doesn't qu get quite as dim as the incandescent does. And this, was, uh, this wasn't a fancy dimmer or anything, this is just a, a stock, plain, inexpensive dimmer that I built into a box with a little cord just so I could use it for dimming lamps. Uh, this was not specifically uh, an LED dimmer or anything special like that, just uh, sort of a thing you'd get from any big box store. One other thing we didn't really touch on is looks. Uh, a lot of light bulbs, they're covered by a lampshade or a diffuser or something. So in that case, looks don't matter at all. On the other hand, you might have some fixtures where you see the light bulb, looks are gonna matter a, a little bit more. Um, on this light bulb here, it has these uh, heat sink fins, which visually I don't care for. I don't think those look particularly nice. Um, I would definitely use this bulb in a fixture where I'm not gonna see it anyways, but uh, something like maybe a, um, a ceiling fan, for example, uh, I think I would prefer a bulb more like this. You're gonna see uh, kind of more of a, a classic bulb look to it. This just has a plain uh, plastic base. Um, the main bulb material itself is plastic, which is also nice. This is great for like in a shop or something. 
because essentially it's shatterproof, so you don't have to worry about anything that way. Okay, so let's say you're convinced. You want to put in some LED bulbs, but you don't want to spend a fortune doing them all at once. You want to start off with just a few. Well, where do you want to put those? Well, I'll let you know in our next video. In the meantime, uh, head on over to ecoprojecteer.net for more eco-friendly and money-saving do-it-yourself tips.